Welcome to Just a Few More Minutes Podcast, where three veterans of the animation and video game industry talk about exactly that, animation video games. I'm one of your hosts. I am Jeff Gabor. I am an animator at Blue Sky Studios, and with me is... I'm Michael Berardini. I'm also an animator at Blue Sky Studios. What a joy to be here. Mm-hmm. And we have a third person in this podcast. It's uh, That is right. Uh, yeah, that guy. That guy. Pete Paquette. Okay. Uh, contract animator, of course. Extraordinaire, video game master, former feature film animator, left because he thought he was too good for it. <laughs> nope, I left because I, I actually felt the complete opposite. <laughs> just to be honest. As I recall, you said, D- I just want to go somewhere and be treated like an old dog on a porch. Yeah. <laughs> what does yeah. that even mean? <laughs> Low key, laid back. Just left to die. (laughs) Yeah, that is pretty sad, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. I was like, okay, Pete. (laughs) Taken out to the back and shot. (laughs) Well, this is a very important episode. This is our episode before Extra Life Marathons. This Saturday, it would be October, what is it, 27th? Is that right? 27th, yep. 27th will be the 24-hour gaming marathon for Pete Paquette. And the following Saturday on November 3rd will be the 24-hour game marathon for Michael and I, including the very special Matt Simmons, also from Blue Sky Studios, CG supervisor. So he'll be just extraordinary. Yes, exactly. Real special. The Jaffam Twitch account will be streaming both days. So there's going to be like 48 hours of content at the end of this thing. You guys are going to be sick of us. (laughs) (laughs) So we will be streaming at twitch.tv slash just a few more minutes. So do you guys have like a, a scheduled plan for your day, Pete? Um, well, I have some games that like whenever I, I get a donation, I ask them if they want me to play a game for their, you know, for their donation. Uh, usually that fills up my day, but we got a lot of really fun tournaments coming up. I, I have one of the retro AVS machines, which is... Uh, which has four controller ports in the front. So we're going to be doing a lot of four-player tournament games this year. Nice. Uh, Bomberman 2, uh, RC Pro-Am 2, and uh, obviously Super Spike V-Ball. Nice. You know, it's crazy with the advent of the uh, Nintendo Switch online stuff that the games that are available, you can play across online. So, like, technically, ice hockey, I could join in. That'd be that? crazy. Yeah. Not that we have to do that. But I do think it's awesome that, for finally, you can play old retro games online with um, people legit. I mean, you could do it in other ways before, but this is actually through Nintendo. That's pretty awesome. I, did, I didn't know it had uh, it had online capabilities. Sure does, That's yeah. really cool. Mm-hmm. Did you both sure subscribe cool. to the Nintendo Switch Online thing? I did, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It's cheap. <laughs> It is cheap. It's like 20 bucks for a year, but it's yeah. also like, I don't know, what am I going to do with it? I'm not going <laughs> to play Splatoon, and I'm not going to play some old NES games. Hmm. Yeah. That, I know yeah. it's disappointing to Mar- both of you, but <laughs> that's the honest truth. But you were for a while playing Mario Kart online. Yeah, but then I stopped. Mm-hmm. Maybe when Smash comes out, if that turns into a thing with everybody, but like I got Mario Party, because we were like, yeah, we're going to play it at lunch every day. We played it like twice after work, and it Hasn't heard, been that exciting. I heard it's a good game, though. I heard it's a lot of fun. It is enjoyable, and this is my first Mario Party. I've never actually played one before, and I've always been very confused about what the fuck you even do in it. But now that I know, you know, it's fun. It's a it's a board game, but with mini games that aren't that great. But the board <laughs> game part is fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. My son really wants that game. So we'll be playing a shit ton of it, Jeff and I, and whoever else shows up on our stream day yeah before we go too far every jaffin podcast starts with the same thing an animation tip so this shouldn't be any exception so i do have a quick tip for you and it's another tip for reference because i think reference is really important it's certainly proving to be important on our film shut up michael uh i hate it (laughs) Well, here, here's a tip to make it so you don't have to do it. 
Okay, cool. This is this is, this is the tip of shoot with other people. Like shoot with people. Oh. So one it, even if you're the the best uh, reference shooter in the world, just the mere uh, the mere fact that you like bring somebody else in and do it with them and just riff off of them and have them look at you while you're doing it, they can come up with so many like great ideas on the fly with you and it I'm always surprised on how much better it it makes it. I was shooting reference with somebody today, and I felt like I was getting it down, and he had a couple quick tweaks. He's like, why don't you try like this and do this little thing? Ten times better immediately. Like, It's just so effective just to go in there and and do it um, with somebody. And I know Graham Silva, our lead animator on our current movie, he he tends to always bring people in and just shoot reference with him. He never uses it, but he gains a lot um, of information by watching other people act out his shots first. So I feel like it's really helpful to do that. Hmm. That's interesting that uh, that he never uses the reference. That's a that's an interesting thing. Well, I think he adheres to Jeff's philosophy of like trying to get the absolute perfect take. Mm-hmm. Are you like no? I don't. I, everything into one. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm from. saying it's actually kind of genius because you're going through that process. Not for the sake of reference, you know what I'm saying? It's it's right. it's hard. It's kind of hard to articulate, but well, yeah, you're you're basically finding a way to quickly shotgun a bunch of acting choices and having other people jump in there. They naturally do different things than you, and you can kind of pick and choose what you like um, from from their library of moves because everybody kind of has their go to gestures and that kind of thing and things that feel natural, or they'll just have a completely different take on the line. Um, one of our characters in our movie, uh, I, well, it doesn't matter. But anyways, I, I, this one animator had like three different people do one reference clip. And it was amazing to see how different each person interpreted the line, whether it was like sarcasm, uh, sadness, or anger. And watching three different people take, uh, take those different avenues created completely different um, pieces of reference that ultimately the director got to kind of like help mold what they actually wanted out of the performance. It's cool. It's very interesting. I have a, I mean, obviously, I've discussed how much I dislike reference in general, but like that shotgunning choices from everyone, that like sort of rubs me the wrong way. And I know it's been very successful because Graham is a fucking awesome animator. Um, but like, I always want everything to be mine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, you I know? know feeling, yeah. Like, a really good example for me, we did like a a marketing shot where uh, Woodstock and all the little Beagle Scouts on the Peanuts movie were like, it was a Christmas thing and they were like riding a sled in and they had no idea how to accomplish that. And that was one of the few times where I like brainstormed with people and was like, I have no idea what to do with this. And we actually came up with something cool, but I always felt like it was never fully mine because it wasn't my idea in the first place. Mm. But it was like a very successful shot and people liked it. So it's like that weird balance of putting yourself aside to find the best idea, I guess, which yeah. I, I, guess I still you, struggle with. You're just a little bit maybe better than me in that respect because I feel like I have no problem taking credit for other people's things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Well, you, you got nominated for the Annie. You won the Annie, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. and I, Annie Award winner, I, Jeff Gabor. On the backs of other people's choices. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's enough shoulder dings in there to know that it's you. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. bing. <laughs> you guys play anything good or? Yes, actually. I I know, Michael, you last time you were saying you were playing Spider Man, where it was quite. Uh, little disappointed i've been playing yeah. it now i actually really like it <laughs> i didn't think i would but um it's got under my skin a little bit like i really look forward to just doing nothing with the actual game like all the side missions that's all i want to do yeah until you do the drone missions have you done those yet no i haven't got to those those are the most annoying fucking side missions i've ever seen in any video game ever but that's fine i, I did hear uh uh Mike, Mikey Richard uh, Facebook post say please no more drone uh, stuff so yeah they must have been real bad I mean, if you're not trying to platinum it doesn't matter don't even bother with them but I completely agree with you I didn't love the game 
and I felt like the story took, I don't know how far you are in the story, um, but I felt like it took way too long to get going, and I felt like it was not going anywhere for like half of the game, Mm -hmm. and I never felt like I was getting anywhere, so I did spend most of my time on the side missions, and at a certain point, I just felt like I hit the wall with them, and I wasn't having fun with them, and the story wasn't going anywhere. But like the game itself is incredibly fun to play, and I kept coming back daily for like multiple hours, even though I wasn't like, ah, this is the best game ever. I was still like, ah, oh, I've got to ignore my wife and swing around the streets because it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the swinging aspect of the game is really well done. The animation and the once you get a hang of it, you actually really feel like you can take control of how fast you're going, and it gets really slick. It's fun. Yep. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, I gotta try that one out. How far in the story are you? Did you beat it? No, no, no. I basically ignored, stopped playing the main story and just started doing all the side quests. <laughs> I, I just, I didn't care. Yeah, and I, also, I mean that's the problem. I, yeah, I wanted to unlock all the like suits and that kind of junk, so I'm just doing everything I can on the side quests. That's a, another good valid point that Chris Silva brought up to me. Like, and this is all personal aesthetic stuff, but I thought there was not a single suit on there that looked anywhere as good as, like, the default suit. Yeah. Well, Scarlet Spider. Kind of a fan of that. Uh, I don't even remember which one that is. It's, like, red with no webs, and then he's got, like, the cut-off blue hoodie. Uh, I loved that that comic book (laughs) series, The Scarlet Spider, so... Uh, All right. Well, I think that's probably my problem because I don't have any like actual affinity to any of the Spider-Man stories or the comics beyond the the movies. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, I never rolled around with that ever. That mm-hmm. that's silly looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few that are silly. Poor Jeff. <laughs> well, right now I'm rocking out to the rocking out like costume where he's got like a weird mohawk and jean jacket. It's completely yeah. stupid. But there was one point when I finally beat the game and I platinum the game and I was like, well, I guess I should put some of these fucking costumes on and I would just like cycle <laughs> through each one for 5 minutes. <laughs> test out all their powers and be like, "Oh, yeah, no, the default was best in in look and uh special ability." Yeah. Yeah, still very fun though. Are you still playing it, Mikey? No, I platinumed it and then I actually just deleted it because I pre-ordered Red Dead Redemption, which requires fucking 150 gigabytes. Whoa. Oh, my God. That's like half of my hard drive. Jesus. Yeah. When does that come out? That's this week or next week? It's this week. I thought it was going to be tomorrow, but it's actually Friday. Oh, okay. But I got it going now just so it downloads like all week because it takes forever. Jesus. Yeah. That's That's huge. It is indeed, and I guess the game itself is 100 gigs, and then you need 50 gigs just for the install process, and, and then you, you get the 50 gigs back. You're not tempted to play uh-huh. that during the entire marathon? Oh, uh, I haven't discussed this with you, but <laughs> I feel like once we get late into the night, we're, we're going to want to just do our own thing for a little bit, so I might just <laughs> bust that out. That's, I figured this it was coming to that. All right. <laughs> You were like, no Fortnite, no Fortnite. You're not allowed. Uh, I guess 2 a.m. Fortnite comes back. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, last year when you guys just played Rocket League for like six hours in the middle of the night and were yelling the whole time, I got a little frustrated with you. So we'll see how it goes this year. <laughs> <laughs> So we got Simmons with us, though. We do. That's a cool addition. He's doing something real fun. Yeah, so Matt Simmons, if you don't know, is one of the best Tetris players I've ever seen. He was ranked on Xbox for a while as one of the top players in the world. Um, that That was a decade ago or something. I don't know which exact Tetris game it was, but... He's very good. I've I've watched him play, and it is magical. <laughs> it's yeah. really cool. He's he's been good for a long time too. Yeah, like I remember being having that same sort of like 
awe inspired. Like, holy crap, when I first saw him play yeah. back in like 2004 or something. Mm-hmm. Like that. So he's been good for a very long time. Yeah, so he's gonna he's gonna try to come over here and he said he won't make any promises, but he is going to try to go the entire twenty four hour marathon without dying. That's that's insane. I'm gonna text him right now because I want to get his specifics right. But he might. I, last I spoke to him, he said that for every cent that someone donates, he will try to clear a line for that. Oh right. So like. If you donate a dollar, he's gonna do his best to clear one line or a hundred lines. lines. Sorry, hundred lines. Yeah. So by the end of the day, he'll have cleared a shit ton of lines. I don't know how many he'll actually have. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, there was a while I was saying he should do it like a uh, charity runathon type thing, where it's like somebody donates a certain amount of money for every line. But the the sheer sheer math of that didn't work out because you'd have to donate half a penny because he's going to clear thousands and thousands of lines. So you'd end up owing him $3,000 at the end of the thing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So you you could never just say, yeah, I'll donate a dollar for every line. No, no, you're you're bankrupt. Yeah, you'd you'd be in a lot of trouble if you did that. Yeah, you'd owe him $30,000. Yeah. So, well, yeah. it would be great for the children's network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, um, I, I'm really excited to watch him do that. And uh, we'll we'll put him on and off the stream um, so you can actually yep. watch him go. And we might have a special surprise. Uh, I have contacted people and I've gotten a positive response. But for the most part, on the main line clearing, Simmons will be playing Puyo Puyo Tetris on the Switch. Um, but if we're lucky, we might get an early copy, an early demo of Tetris Effect, which comes out a week later than our stream on November 7th or something, um, which is the brand new Tetris that is in VR and is by the guy that made Res and Luminous. So it's going to be fucking crazy. I'll bring my PSVR over and slot him in there if we get it and, and watch him masturbate to the <laughs> beautiful Tetris glory. <laughs> You know what's Get interesting? I, I saw a video of like they 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 actually got the they got the like top Tetris player to play that. Did you see yep. that video? Yeah. And he was actually better in VR than he was on I know TV. Simmons is like super excited about being able to achieve a Doka Decahedron clear line or whatever the fuck it was that 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 guy was super excited about. Hmm. Because yeah. like basically this game has like a, a slow motion effect where you can get more Tetrises than you normally could in any other Tetris game. So he's excited for that. <laughs> gonna be crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna be checking in from time to time. Although I'll probably be pretty drunk. I'll be in California. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you you'll have three hours behind us, so I hope you won't be completely s faced. <laughs> that early in the day. <laughs> well, you know, you know the guys who are who I'm going to visit. Yeah, so. I guess so. <laughs> Not nearly as impressive, but my my uh, my brother recently got like crazy into Zelda. And specifically speedrunning it. Oh. And um, because I, I kind of like poked at him and said, hey, let's do a challenge. Remember like the challenge we did, Jeff? Mm-hmm. Saying like, how far can you get in Zelda in like an hour? Right? So I remember those. Last year, uh, he really struggled with that. Not, not last year, the year before, he really struggled with that same sort of a challenge. And we gave him so much shit for it. So this year he was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to start learning speedrunning this shit. So he can beat it in like 50 minutes. Yeah. Or something uh, like that. Is he, uh, so, is he screen wrapping? No, he's not doing any of the, any of the cheats or anything like no that. Cheats. So also like, like using the sword to like push yourself out of, out of blocks. So you don't have to get keys and that kind of stuff. No, or, nothing uh, like that. Cool. Okay. Just kind of, going through pure i like and that then, and yeah, then yeah. uh so so i was gonna make the comp the same challenge this year and then i was like well fuck that i can't do that 
you know, he'll he'll obviously win, so he's going to do it. <laughs> and then he challenged me to to learn to try the same thing with Metroid. Oh, oh so I, I I've been speed running Metroid, and today I beat it in forty five minutes. Holy shit! Oh man, this is it's not a world record, but it's the fastest I've ever done it. <laughs> I've been speed running and, Ninja Gaiden. Really? Yeah, I can't beat it. <laughs> so, Dude, that's a that's a hard game to speed run, man. Yeah. That's a difficult game. Like you have to, it comes down to like the memorization of each board, right? I mean, you. I've gotten pretty close. Uh, I just can't memorize the last couple boards. It's there's just too much to memorize. Yeah. Uh, and then there's this thing called button mash, or uh, what is it called? It's like a series of slash cancels. So basically, you can get like um, seven hits in on a thing um, by just jumping, and you so you slash, and then you can cancel out the slash, and then do it again. Because normally the game only lets you like jump and slash once. You can mm-hmm. do it like seven times. So that's the only way you can really beat the last boss um, fast. So huh. I can't get it down. Yeah, I was, I was watching uh, the world record holder for Metroid. And some of the stuff he pulled up. He did it in 15 minutes. Wow. And uh, Jeez. But he didn't, he didn't go through and get all the items. He didn't need to. He, he knew how to mm-hmm. manipulate the game in such a way to where he could jump ahead. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was uh, it was very impressive. So, did you, you say know. Metroid or Super Metroid? Metroid. Okay. Also, this 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 past month, I've I saw Littlefoot. Uh, oh yeah, how was that? Or Smallfoot? Sorry. Yeah, you're thinking. I was like, Lamb before time. What are you talking about? No, no, not Littlefoot. Smallfoot. Um, I actually. Was pretty surprised that that I enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I wasn't expecting. I guess I wasn't expecting anything because I never heard anything about it. Yeah. Um, and it came out, and I watched it, and it, surprisingly enough, it's a musical, which was surprising. But it w- also, like some of the songs, kind of kind of sucked. But a couple of them were actually pretty good. I don't know. I had a good time. It wasn't was it like it wasn't like my animated film of the year or anything but it was but it was it was pretty good was the style pushed because i i started watching hotel t3 yesterday and i i just fucking love what they do at over there yeah it, it definitely is um specifically on their in-betweens and transitions you know yep they push it quite a bit uh there's the posing not so much posing is a little more subdued, but the, the transitions are definitely there. Interesting. Cool. I'll check that out. And then uh, I've been watching Hilda, which I oh. absolutely adore. Oh, Hilda is like, I, I forget who I was talking to, and they would disagree with this, but I feel like Hilda is such a perfect little series. Yeah. yeah I fucking adore it. The animation is all like surprisingly w- well done for that type of show and like it's so sweet and ah it's just so great i remember what i watched the first episode i just threw it on and i was just like holy shit i gotta yep. watch all of this like yep. you know so, and, and we watched it as a family and everybody loves it it's and, cool because luke pearson is he's the creator of hilda and he's like a not super well-known illustrator i mean i've stumbled upon him a couple years ago and fell in love with everything he did, but Hilda was like one of his books that I never read because I thought oh, it's like a it's a kids comic. I'm not going to read that, but now I'm super eager to dive into it all because like his style is super awesome and they translated it really well in the show, especially the like the subdued color palette. Like that yeah, was one yeah. of my favorite things about it, where it, like the show fucking sticks to its guns and that show is mostly like turquoise and blues and purples and orange and they don't usually lean out of that unless for like a specific reason i thought it was really really well done yeah it's it's really worth watching um i guess they they announced that they're they are moving forward with season two yep which is great like the world needs more shows like that i agree badly is that on netflix or what yeah yep netflix i have to check it good out good show yeah watch it with mac i think she'll like it yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. She's a baby. 
Yeah, well, she's still pretty young, but <laughs> but she might like she might like the colors and the the characters and stuff. Yeah, right now she's really into Boss Baby. <laughs> That's fun. It's all right. I don't mind Boss yeah. Baby. It's got some good animation. Doesn't have all the great songs from Trolls though. No, but there's still plenty of that being played at the house too. So <laughs> I don't, I'm not getting out of that. Yeah, I went over to their house for dinner a couple weeks ago and Jeff just turned on children's music in the background. (laughs) He's like, hold on, let me set the mood. Yeah, it's a different party (laughs) atmosphere than it used to be, Jeff. (laughs) Sorry about that. What's the shark song? (laughs) Baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark. Now she uh now she demands us change all the names to various family members. So, oh, good. Uh, it, so it'll be like she'll she'll like put in a request for uh, Mindy. So it'll be like Mindy Shark, do 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 Mindy Shark, do 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 do. Oh well, that's a pretty adorable. Mindy will be happy to hear that. That was my ride home today. Uh, various people being um, sharks and singing Happy Birthday to various people. <laughs> She likes the happy birthday song? Oh, loves it. Yeah, oh, that's cute. You guys have a pretty high stake thing going on, right? Like you uh Yeah, so oh. let's talk about our extra life thing. There's uh Michael should you should really just talk about your incentives. Like not that I wanna give any more props, but uh I, can, I definitely cannot compete with all the giveaways that you're doing, so it's pretty awesome to see Yeah. Doing. And you're still fucking beating me. I don't understand. I have all these great prizes, and you're beating me. <laughs> because it's always the same thing. I know your entire row, and everybody else at Blue Sky, you have warned, do not donate until the last half hour. That way I have no idea what I'm supposed to raise or request from people. <laughs> <laughs> you give me that's way actually, too much credit. <laughs> that's actually a pretty good strategy to get more money for the... For the fundraiser, you raised like I swear to God, like seven hundred dollars in the last half hour of our competition last year. It's bullshit. Yeah, but it's not like I orchestrated it. I mean, I suggested people should pay at the last minute, but oh. I didn't have a command button that. <laughs> Defcon won. They you they ra- all did it of their own volition. You raised so much in that last five minutes that. I couldn't. I was gonna try to put in an extra donation for myself to cover it, so I wouldn't lose. <laughs> and it was so much, I just couldn't even do it. I, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna pay five hundred bucks or whatever to uh, not eat the jalapenos and the shot of Tabasco. So hey, well, this year we're changing it up. Yeah, fiery buttholes, no more. That's not a thing anymore. We grew up. We're adults now. We don't do dumb shit like that anymore. <laughs> this year. We're eating a handful of bugs. <laughs> <laughs> you have a more sophisticated palate now. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> that, and that's not a joke. Like you have the pictures, of the, like the picture you put online of the bugs. Yeah. They look like they have like salt on them and stuff. Are they like, uh, are they, they're not like bugs you went out in the backyard and found, right? They're, they're like edible bugs, right? They're edible bugs that I found okay. through Amazon. I just... I was trying to come up with something stupid for us to do, and I just went to Amazon and typed in edible to see what would come up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, and, you, know, you never know what will come through with that. So. <laughs> well, the first thing that was applicable to this situation was the bugs. And I read all the reviews, and that picture that I posted was a user review. And I was like, all right, this, this is it. <laughs> it's so foul. <sighs> Oh, I'm, I'm begging excited. people to please because last year that I got screwed with that everybody donating the last second. And as I the reason why I told Michael I was hesitant to do this stupid competition is because everybody wants to punish the supervisor. And for no. the second year in a row I'm the supervisor. This movie's been going on too long. <laughs> I have to stop souping <laughs> so I can win again. I'm telling you, it's not a punishment of the soup. No. It's a, it, last year it was a punishment of you because you had never eaten any jalapenos. Pete and I had, <laughs> you hadn't, and you wriggled your way out of it with some legalese bullshit. <laughs> that was if, funny. If you recall. I recall that. <laughs> so you Diego, did sort you? of <laughs> you did sort of deserve it. This year, 
It's all up in the air. I do have a bunch of extra super cool things that people could win if they donate to me, though. And if you uh, if you go to your Instagram, there is some really awesome art up on there right now. Like, seriously, I want a copy of the book. Well, you, uh, you might be able to get one for free, Pete. Well, no, I would I would donate my money, Pete. So you're gonna donate any a hundred bucks to Michael? <laughs> Who said anything about a hundred bucks? It has to be a hundred bucks to get the book. Oh, tell him. To I it. but but the art is that good, dude. <laughs> Thank you. you so let me run everything down for you guys. For the past two years, I've been doing a raffle of an original piece of art that I print out on canvas and frame it and ship it to you. But there's only two. And that's happening again this year. So if you donate 30 bucks, you'll be entered into two raffles for an original piece of art by me. But what comes in extra fancy, which I just decided like two days ago, I've been doing this Dungeons and Dragons inspired comic, daily comic on Instagram for the past two, three weeks now, because I somehow got really into Critical Role. It's very nerdy. I'm not going to get into it. It's very fucking great, though. Anyway, I've been doing this comic, and I had no intention of doing anything with it except getting through October and having some semblance of a story. And then I was like, well, fuck. How about if everyone donates, everyone who donates $100 could get a physical printout copy of this little story called The Adventures of Alabaster Taint. (laughs) Which is, by the way, the name of every character I make in any video game. (laughs) (laughs) That's a really cool idea. Really cool, really fun. Uh, I'm a a fan. Thank you. I, I want people to be interested. I've posted it a couple times on like Facebook and Instagram and I'm not getting a lot of bites on this thing, so I wonder if I do get 20 printed out, if I'll even have to give them away. If not, Pete, you get one for free, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know uh, hundred bucks fantastic. is like a hundred bucks is a steep, steep cost, but I mean, for the I'm trying to like balance it out. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to pay for all this myself, so I'm sort of thinking of it as. A donation, even though it won't technically be a donation. So I want the amount that people are giving to, you know, equate yeah. or balance. Yeah. We haven't even talked yeah. about like what this charity sure. thing is and what it's for. True, that is true. Um, so this is extra life, Pete. You got us in this uh, six years ago. I think this is number yep. six, seven, something like that. But anyways, it's a charity yep. that was. Uh, that's basically set up to to help um, do a fundraising for the Children's Miracle Network, which is a another fun. It's it, it's basically another charity that helps um, sick kids, sick families, um, look for cures, look for equipment, um, try to fund local uh, children's hospitals. Uh, it's a fantastic charity. Uh, some of the the stories that you read about, and especially like the story of how Extra Life came to be, is incredibly sad but heartwarming, and it's. Um, Something that, you know, I think speaks to all of us and uh, really something we are passionate about supporting every year. And our team has raised, what is it, 12? Over the years? Yeah. Over $31,000. Yeah. And this year yeah. we're already at $4,500. We're 500 from our goal already. And we haven't even hit our actual game days. Yeah. So it's a thank you to the supporters. Yep. Yeah. Um, who have supported us so far, but we are always looking for new supporters. Uh, you know, a dollar doesn't matter. Every little bit counts. Yep. So uh, I will, I, maybe you change yours or not, Jeff, this year, but I'm uh, working for the uh, Colorado Children's Hospital yes, this I, year. Yes, I'm doing that as well because uh, my dad worked there for some 25 years, so I, I have kind of an affiliation to it. Um, so. Yeah. yeah, and I'm doing Boston Children's Hospital as usual, and I have I have an incentive coming. Do um, you? Yeah, since I work since I work for Blizzard, uh, they are going to be hooking me up with a poster signed Ooh. for Overwatch, and um, 
also maybe some other things too. It's it's not I'm not that that's kind of uh, the details are kind of foggy, but mm-hmm. um, I know I, I'm definitely going to have a poster to raffle off. Nice. Um, so thank you to Blizzard for that because that's freaking awesome. Um, but I'm trying to figure out how I should go about raffling it off. I, I was thinking, you know, for whoever donated fifty dollars, they get an entry into the raffle. And that that means you know also any past donors that it would include that too. So right, right. Right. if you donated like two hundred dollars, you would get four entries into the raffle. That's how I've been doing it for the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 my thought anyway. So um, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that works itself out. But uh, it should hopefully bring bring some more uh, donations in. Yeah, I mean. Uh... Yeah, mine doesn't really compete with with some of the cool stuff there. But uh, in years past, I did uh, custom NES cartridges that were made for the particular year. Um, two years that ago, was pre- that was pretty dope, dude. <laughs> the, the one three years ago was fun. Uh, two years ago, I was uh, I had one donor um, to win a custom one, just specifically made for that person, which I just finished this last weekend. So I was a little late <laughs> on that. But to be fair. My uh, my daughter was born three days after we did the raffle draw, so it got kind of put on the back burner. But I'm still going to make True. good on it. So I'm thinking about doing that again and actually trying to pull it off since my son won't be born for two more months. So I should be able to squeeze something in. Um, so I think I'm probably going to do that, and that'll be similar like a fifty for every 50 bucks, um, get an entry into the raffle. So, you know, everybody, if you got the cash, just donate to all of us. And you could get a lot of sweet shit. So as I was saying, Michael, we get we get maquettes for each one of the films, right? Blue Sky related maquettes. So we had like you could buy up to three yep. of them. So they're super yep. limited. They're only given to the employees that worked on the movie. So I wanted to like have like the directors and leads animators sign a couple of these and then raffle those off. But I would want like people from outside our studio to like know about it and see if they would want it. Um, I mean, it would be pretty cool though. I know it's too cool that I don't want it to go for like not raising enough money. Like that's like a, that's a big deal yeah. to lose one of those. Cause like I'm never getting that back. Like you can't get a new one. Um, yeah, that's it's very, it's very custom. So yeah. maybe, maybe next year or something I would want like, I, I would hope like someone like Cartoon Brew or or some some animation website would cover it and help push it because um, it's definitely super limited and rare. Especially like the Peanuts one with Charlie Brown Snoopy. It was just like man, that one's really okay. good. I would so, not part with that. <laughs> are those your like? Are those are those the ones that Blue Sky would make a duplicate version of the original, or would it be? Like it, it would be like a limited run, obviously. But I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, they're they're all uh, what, whatever, laser printed, but not laser, whatever the, uh, I don't know, three D sculpted. They're not originals. Yeah, but they get one run. You like basically say how many you want, and then they create the molds for it, run it, um, give it to the employees, and then they destroy the molds, and that's it. Never again. So. There's, crazy so that we have uh some ones from ice age four we have the peanuts one um we have uh 20th anniversary Man. blue sky one that one i would never give away <laughs> f that one that one's never going away that scrap one like yeah they each employee got one and the company was really small back then uh yep i'm never giving that one away yeah i still have it on my desk over yeah, there that one's going to my <laughs> grave In uh, celebration, sort of, of Extra Life, we uh, we started a countdown, right, Jeff? Yeah, so it's basically a free way to spam everybody on Facebook every day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're counting down, Pete, you're counting down your favorite uh, 25 NES games. 20? Yep. Yeah, 25. Uh, and I was doing my top 30 games of all time. Um, Pete, you want to run down what you've got so far? Yeah. Um, so right now I just did uh, Castlevania as my... 
my number five. But right, counting hair, down to one. Yes. So you've done twenty five through five already. Right. So twenty five for me was Kid Icarus, followed by Turtles Two, the arcade game, and then the Adventure of Lolo, the uh, Journey to Silius, Blades of Steel, RC Pro Am, Ducktales, Fire and Ice, Dragon Spirit. Rolling Thunder, Bionic Commando, Mega Man 3, Ninja Gaiden, Zelda 2, RBI Baseball, Batman, Super Mario 2, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Kung Fu, <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, and now Castlevania. Yeah. So I only got four left. It's been a fun list uh, watching you, like being able to comment on, on it every day. And it's funny, I don't yeah. know if it's happening to you, but I've gotten now people waiting for their favorite game, and they won't donate until i say it so every no, I, day every day i ha- i get somebody that'll like donate like 25 bucks he's like ah, you finally got it no shit no i haven't <laughs> had anything like that that's uh, cool though that's a cool that's a cool thing yeah it's fun um for me it's been more like why isn't this on your list or, right. <laughs> <laughs> or like, where is uh Where's the big three? You know, or call, trying to call the big three. I know. Um, I was. At, I know you. Uh, you mentioned it to somebody on Facebook saying you thought people were going to be surprised. I have a theory. I, I feel like you're going to pull um, either a Mr. Gimmick or a, uh, a Little Samson in the top three, just to really like people that don't know, they won't see it coming. I could tell you, I didn't do that. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, the reason why I I left games like that off the list was because, yeah, they're fantastic, fantastic games. But I tried to keep it to ones that people could easily get get a hold of. Right. You know. Uh, so like, Mr. Gimmick was a European uh, or a Japanese and European exclusive. It never came to America, so I left that one off the list. Although that would be in my top three. Uh, the other one being Little Samson, but nobody has Little Samson, so yeah. you know it's a great game. I played it, but like I can't. I, I have a history with the games that are on my list. You know what I mean? I, I don't have a history with Little Samson. All right, damn it. Yeah. Well, I'll, you'll keep me ca- guessing then. Yeah. Uh, so for my top thirty, I'm on day eleven. Um, so counting down from 30, I had Beyond Oasis. It's a Genesis game. It was great. Sword of Vermilion, King's Quest for um, various computers, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse for the Genesis, Batman NES, um, Golden Axe. It's freaking great. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, Busta Groove, Road Rash 2, Double Dragon 2, Ninja Gaiden. And then I actually put a couple really recent games inside. And from this year, Celeste. I love that game. Uh, then we got Space Quest, Castle Crashers, Mega Bomber Man, SimCity 2000, Jackal, GoldenEye, and I am currently on Earthworm Jim. So I have my top 10 left to go. Yeah, man. You have some great games on that list. One yeah. of the best ones so far for me is Jackal. Like, I, love to, that game. I, I freaking love that game. I, I should have put it on my list because it's not on my list. I'm excited to play that one. It's a lot of fun, dude. You guys are going to have a blast with that game. Yeah, it's an easy pickup. Um, it had some really weird name in the arcade. Like, it wasn't called Jackal in the arcade. Uh, it wasn't? No. Let me see uh, See if I can just do a quick search. Cause it, it, are you thinking of that, or are you thinking of Life Force and Salamander? No, no, it's definitely Jackal. Um, let's see. It's Jackal, arcade name in the U.S. Uh Top Gunner. Oh, really? Yeah. Top Gunner. Yeah, weird, right? That is weird. I, I think it's that's... smart not to uh, <laughs> keep it as Top Gunner in 1986, considering Tom Cruise rolling around with Top Gun. Yeah. And the, the shitty Top Gun NES game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to stay away from that. Were you here that year? This is a good Extra Life story. There was a year where we were playing Top Gun, mm-hmm. and we were streaming it, and it was, it was tre- a big, Trevor a big Young. thing about yeah. Trevor yeah. Young ended up saying anybody to land uh, the ship, he would donate like ten bucks to. Yeah, 
So like we all consecutively landed the fucking plane on the aircraft carrier. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And uh it was it was there's like this whole thing around the Top Gun video game where you if you're gonna have to land the plane you're as good as dead because the controls are shit and you know, uh it's not a good game, et cetera, et cetera. But and I've only done it maybe once or twice in my life. And we all did it in yeah. a row like that. That it was, was crazy. It was crazy. I, I couldn't believe when the first person landed it and then it was just right out right and over again. So Trevor ended up like yeah. dishing out forty, fifty bucks on that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else, guys? Because I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to Pete's stream this Saturday, and uh, I don't really have anything else to add. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, no, uh, we can give out our names. Uh, maybe we can put that in the description somewhere on YouTube, somewhere here. I don't know if anybody knows how to do that. But yeah, uh, I could put the uh, the the donation links for each of us on yeah. there, just in case. Yeah. Extra dash life dot org backslash participant backslash uh i'm jeff Cabor. um i'm m berardini and i am pete piquette are you no <laughs> are, aren't you pdp let me check I, I don't know i i always just log on it says pete piquette mm. oh oh you're give right me, give me my like, url yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the URL. custom one the url is pdp yeah okay Make sure you put that in the link. Uh, so that's it from us. Uh, we'll we'll see you for 24 hours on Saturday, uh, uh, October 27th, 2018. And Michael and I will see you on November 3rd um, of 2018 for 24 hours. A uh, special shout out to who donated $500 to me. <laughs> no, he didn't. Oh, yeah. Just now? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Where's my... Nice. Check? Did he donate any... <laughs> No. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening already. <laughs> oh, and it happens live. I, this is delicious. This no, is it's not delicious. delicious. I'm going to vomit. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, it's, this is going to be an interesting extra life, everybody. Yep. Watch me eat crickets November 3rd. <laughs> uh, this is our last episode beforehand. I think we're going to probably cut it off somewhere around 7 p.m. on November 3rd. Right. Yeah. Uh, the donation stuff. Yeah. For well, the com- I mean, for the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that can way, continue to donate yeah. through the end of the year. So seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we'll cut it off. Um, so that'd be four o'clock California time. Uh, so get your donations in before then if you're wanting to contribute. Oh, actually, something we did not mention was Chris Williams is donating all the proceeds to his um, uh, graphic novel uh, that he produced right now. So any if you buy the book. He takes the proceeds from that and donates to one of us. So if you tell him, if you buy the book and say, "Hey, I would like to donate towards Michael or Jeff or Pete um, or Simmons," also, uh, uh, actually, we need to plug Simmons as well. So he's uh, he's donating money. And as we we have actually a whole team. If you go to our page, there's a whole roster of people to donate to. Yep, for yeah. Chris Williams' book, uh, it's called Red Fog, and you can go to redfog.storeenvy.com. Um, and you can purchase it there. It's on sale for all of October. Um, I think there should be a little thing in there where you can put in a, a note to the vendor or whatever, and you can say where you want your money to go. Also, our team name is Nest, is Nest Quest. Yep, NES so, Quest. Yep. That's how you can find our list as well. All right, we've plugged the hell out of this. Hopefully people will listen to this at least a little bit so they can get that information and follow us because it is for the kids and we are doing it for um, for a good reason. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, All this right. has been just a few more minutes podcast where three veterans of the animation and video game industry talk about exactly that, animation and video games and raising money for the kids. Uh, all right. Good night, everybody. Take it easy. Bye.
So. Did we lose Mikey? I think we might have used Mikey. <laughs> I, I thought I, I thought you were talking. I thought you were talking to Mikey, and I look over, and he's all pie-eyed right now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, huh, he looks a little funny. There he is. Uh, he like oh shit! Back. Porn. <laughs> I supposedly have a poor network connection. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a right. porn network. Connection? I know that's what it came across <laughs> for <to> our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a porn network. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Hi. texting Mindy to see if she's streaming something horrendously heavy right now or something. <laughs> well, she might be having the porn network for all I know. 